Okay, hi there, welcome to another video on the coronavirus crisis. So, to what extent has the coronavirus pandemic acted as a catalyst for increased corporate social responsibility? Well, in this video, we're going to be looking at lots of examples and uh, criticisms also of some businesses for their actions as the public health and economic crisis has deepened. Some economists in the past have been sceptical a little bit about social corporate responsibility. Consider this famous quote from the monetarist economist Milton Friedman. The one responsibility of business towards the society is maximisation of profits to shareholders within the legal framework and the ethical custom of the country. So what is corporate social responsibility? Let's start with a definition. Uh, the, it's, the, it's CSR is defined as the extent to which a business addresses the concerns and obligations to its wider stakeholders. Now let's note here that this wider definition of stakeholders is crucial to understanding CSR. The public health crisis has accentuated the need for businesses to see the much wider, broader social purpose of their activities. So I would include in that definition the actions that the business takes. What we see businesses do uh, over and above the minimum required by law in addressing societal needs and wants. This graphic, I think, neatly shows the breadth of definition of what constitutes a stakeholder rather than the narrow interpretation of an equity shareholder in a business. So businesses have responsibilities both to their owners, yes, uh, but also to their employees, to their managers, to their customers, to government, to suppliers within their industry and business, to creditors and the wider catch-all concept of society. And that's the, what we're going to focus on in this video. There are many arguments for businesses adopting rigorous, ambitious, generous corporate social responsibility. The first is that ethical business does matter, particularly uh, as we face a time of great uncertainty and stress. And uh, corporate responsibility, a social Responsibility can be good for the bottom line, ultimately. It can improve corporate image, reputation and goodwill amongst, amongst customers, which ultimately is good for your sales and your revenues and your profits. And being socially responsible in every conceivable way that you can is attractive to stakeholders, including customers. Many customers now have a strong ethical, ethical dimension to their purchase decisions and also potentially to existing and um, potential investors. And think about the impact of social responsibility on the motivation of people at work. Uh, CSR, handle well, can increase, can enhance, uh, can cement employee motivation by stressing in particular the purpose, motive of being at work. So I'm really grateful to economics and business teachers from across the UK and beyond who have suggested good recent examples of businesses engaging in genuine social responsibility and uh, we'll also look at some counter examples of businesses operating in a way that perhaps raises our, our concerns, our criticisms, our hackles along the way. Brewdog is uh, one of my favourite companies and along with other brewers and uh, distillers, Brewdog uh, as a company which has been working around the clock, switching production from beer to producing batches of hand sanitizers. And those will be given away to local charities and the community rather than sold using all kinds of uh, different um, packaging options here. I think BrewDog is a business which captures the mood of the moment pretty well. Good example of CSR. Other businesses, of course, have much, much deeper pockets. Jack Ma, the billionaire, the founder of Alibaba, is uh, spending millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars, shipping coronavirus test kits to the United States and also to a range of emerging market and developing countries. Uh, Zoom has been in the, in the news recently. Many of you will be using Zoom for your distance learning. Uh, the executive, Eric Yuan, has given uh, K, uh, K-12 schools his video conferencing tool for free. Many millions of people have downloaded the app. We're using it, for example, at my school. Although Zoom has come under fire, actually, recently it's, it's emerged that it's been sending data about users' devices to Facebook. Uh, the Royal Mint is a really, really interesting example of how a business can pivot production for wider social benefit. The Royal Mail, sorry, the Royal Mint has turned to uh, making manufacturing protective visors 
for distribution to hospitals, uh, to GPs, pharmacies, nursing homes and hospices. Ineos, one of Britain's biggest companies, chemical giant, announced uh, just about 10 days ago that they were going to set up a factory to build 1 million bottles of hand sanitizer per month. And that factory is now up and running, uh, distributing to hospitals and other uh, organisations that need it. Incredible scale of production achieved so rapidly. A lot, many businesses have been of turning to helping local food banks. Now, Deliveroo, of course, uh, and Uber have also been criticised uh, in recent times. Uber, for example, uh, suspending the accounts of, of some drivers who need to self-isolate. Deliveroo's attitude towards zero-hours contract workers. And here are two good examples of businesses helping to uh, support local food banks where there's been a sharp spike in need. So Deliveroo offering NHS free trips and food. I love this example from Morrison's major supermarket. Very interesting specific example here. They have added an extra hour of manufacturing capacity in their you know, bakeries and things purely to increase supplies uh, to, to give to food banks. Many of whom are, are struggling. I think that's one of my favourite examples at the moment of corporate social responsibility. Um, the co-op, as you'd expect, has a strong CSR um, dimension, handing money uh, directly to food banks and other local causes and charities. It's giving free vouchers to uh, families of kids who attend the co-op academies uh, set of schools. Uh, Asda giving money to uh, to the Trestle Trust and other food banks. So lots of supermarkets who, of course, have been incredibly busy and in many senses have gained from the crisis as we become more reliant on them are showing their social purpose. Many, uh, many uh, restaurants and supermarkets have been given free food and drinks. Many supermarkets now changing their opening hours uh, to give better access to elderly and more vulnerable customers and also to give NHS workers the chance to shop uh, and uh, get those basic essentials. Two good examples there from Tesco and Waitrose. Tesco and Asda have given all their pregnant, vulnerable and over 70 staff 12 weeks paid leave. I'm not sure how many staff at Asda and Tesco's are over 70, but clearly supermarkets employ many, many people. And in this world of you know, lifelong working, uh, indeed, they may well employ lots of people over the age of 70. Good example there, Brompton Bikes, a small business, successful business, an iconic bike company offering 200 cycles to help NHS staff get to work and avoid crowded, crowded public transport. Really, really good example here picked up by one teacher of Mercedes working in hand with UCL to manufacture a breathing aid uh, that can be used to keep COVID-19 patients out of an intensive care unit, an ICU. In other words, that's designed to relieve the pressure on the capacity of the ICU system. Absolutely brilliant example of, of, of work. Very high level of human capital being used and getting a product, not to market, but getting a product to, uh, to hospitals in, in quick time. Co-op, showing here an example of the duty of care that employers have to their employees. That's part of corporate social responsibility. Investing £3 million on new protective equipment for our store colleagues, protective screens, supplying gloves, hand sanitizers, etc. The co-op uh, making some significant investment there in, in its employees. And I think, uh, well, I think this is corporate social responsibility. I think I've left this example to last. I think this is one of the best examples of a business where corporate responsibility is part of their DNA has been for years for decades you know this current crisis uh, gives lots of companies the opportunities for corporate social responsibility to give back to communities and the wider uh, wider society um, some companies have deep pockets and they can afford the big projects others do so in a more measured manageable way Timpsons, of course, is a tremendous example of a business with a strong social purpose. Um, closing all of their shops temporarily, we hope. Um, all colleagues were made on full pay. James Timpson, the, the chief executive, uh, is a very strong supporter of, um, of employing people with a, a criminal record in an attempt to reduce recidivism rates. Interestingly, the, the, um, the Timpson Foundation specialises in, in employing people who are marginalised within societies. Uh, somebody mentioned to me the other day that um, if you're unemployed and going for an interview, 
Timpsons will clean an outfit for you free of charge across all of their stores uh, nationwide. Timpsons, for me, epitomizes corporate social responsibility. And this concept is based on uh, the notion of interdependence of business and society. Society needs businesses. We need viable businesses that will grow to create jobs, to generate wages in the circular flow, to drive investment and innovation. Of course, governments need businesses to pay those taxes in VAT and corporation tax and national insurance and other taxes. But businesses also need society to create demand. People have a job, have an income, they can go and shop. Demand creates revenues and profits. Um, society, uh, governments provide the essential public goods that allow businesses to operate efficiently. And of course, providing that legal protection, the rule of law under which businesses operate. So business and society are interdependent, a key part of this discussion. Not every business has been shown necessarily in a positive light in recent times. Uh, there have been quite a significant number of, in, of um, complaints of price gouging. Price gouging is a form of price discrimination where you simply jack up the price of a product because there's a spike in demand and a very strong need reflected in a very low elasticity of demand. Amazon blog reported last week that they've already removed well over half a million of offers from stores due to price gouging, so suspending accounts. Uh, Amazon have strengthened their fair pricing policies. eBay has also been in the news recently for people price gouging on their auction site. Uh, Sports Direct has come under some criticism. Uh, some, some of us have particular views on Sports Direct as a business and its owner, Mike Ashley. Uh, they were accused of price gouging about a week ago. Uh, some documents were unearthed showing that, for example, a kettlebell had gone up from £9.99 to £14.99. Um, and and uh, Sports Direct is a good example of a business uh, where price gouging may well have happened. Um, this was a good example in the West Midlands of a chain of pharmacies, uh, Jehoots, which was accused by a local councillor of price gouging, uh, showing Calpol, for example, uh, being priced at 9 99 for a very small bottle and 19 99 uh, for a very large bottle. Paracetamol, for example, 32-pack was £1.39, but within a week it was £9.99. Now, it has to be said that Jehoots has said they blamed a communication error for this and they were going to refund customers and ensure no repeat of the error. Whenever, always, always be slightly cautious of a business that blames a communication error when, uh, when the media find out what's going on. ASOS criticised. They organised flash sales, obviously in an attempt to clear stock uh, because stock is a big drain on the, um, the cash flow of a business. But the flash sale that ASOS launched uh, put huge pressure on workers at their warehouses. But of course, then there were complaints flooding in of, of um, employers uh, not being given a sufficient protection uh, regarding social distancing. And again, a reminder that employers have a duty of care to their employees. J.D. Weatherspoons, again, some of us have views on this business. Uh, the, the boss wanted to keep pubs open, regarding them as essential, uh, telling workers to go work for Tesco instead of uh, um, being paid during leave. Uh, this is the Tesco's, uh, so this was the uh, Weatherspoons branch, I think, in, in um, South East London, a few, three or four days later. A very famous example of, uh, of a business, a hotel uh, owned by Britannia Hotels in Scotland, which sacked its workers, uh, making them uh, homeless, and one or two people had to sleep in, in tents and things. Really, really good example of a business that really didn't show a duty of care to its employees, many of whom come from overseas. The good news is that the Old Bridge Hotel nearby uh, responded in a tremendously socially responsible way. We've had many cancellations in our bunkhouse here. If we can help out, please drop us a line. <coughs> Pardon me, there are beds here for you to work, um, to, for you to live in until you get your next steps. Well done to the Old Bridge Hotel. So I've shown you some examples of corporate social responsibility. And I think I've also shown some examples of businesses not particularly in a positive light at the moment. If you want to read more about this concept of social capitalism, which is becoming uh, more significant as the days and weeks emerge, there was a recent article by the economist, professor of economics at UCL, 
Professor Mariana Mazzucatu, who's also written a book called The Entrepreneurial State. And she's written a book about the future of capitalism when this crisis is over. She writes, COVID-19 is a major event that exposes the lack of preparedness and resilience of the increasingly globalised and interconnected economy. We can use this moment to bring a stakeholder approach to the centre of capitalism. Let's not let this crisis go to waste. A call to arms for people who believe that corporate social responsibility in its broadest sense should become a default in the DNA and the activities of businesses large and small. I'll post some links to some of these articles and examples in the comments section of the video. But for now, thank you for joining in this video on coronavirus and corporate social responsibility.